We're actually here in the Embassy of Denmark and uh, we'll be talking to two very important people behind the Embassy. <laughs> and as we ask the questions, it's up to you who's going to answer the question. First and foremost, why do people consider Denmark as one of the most sophisticated and cultured <laughs> developed countries in the world? I think that comes from the fact that we have a hugely country and uh, we are very happy people. People ask us how come Danes are so happy and I think that has something to do with our welfare model. I do think so as well. I think we have created a, or we have a, a, a community where you have a large degree of trust in between individuals. And I think that most people feel that they have a basic safety that makes them able to sort of enjoy life uh, without con being too concerned. One very simple example is our educational system where you have free education for all from uh, pre-K until the end of university. You may be shocked by me telling that you even have sort of student, uh, general student stipends. So um, university students would receive a certain basic salary from the state. And how do you, yes, yeah. how, sorry. Yeah, well, f fortunately, we have been able to, to sort of uh, make this work together with a rather advanced uh, uh, free market economy. As Denmark is a small, very open liberal economy. And may I ask, how have you been able to achieve that? People say that in your country, for example, from birth to death, everything is taken care of. That's is that you're true? asking how we are able to, to do, achieve that? To yes. achieve what, that? what is the, the formula? So well, maybe other tax. countries can follow suit. We pay tax and Danes pay tax with pride because we have, like my colleague said, we have a trust in our system so we know where our tax money go. And it goes into education and healthcare and running our society. And then I believe that the, the fact that many or rather most uh, Danish women, females are on the labor market mm -hmm. and we really use that resource. I can see that we're comparing with the United States where many well-educated uh, women has to, to, to be at home to take care of the kids. There we have created a system where they would still participate in the labor market. I think that really adds to our economy. Tell us exactly uh, information, brief information about uh, Denmark, you know, the population of the country itself and uh, basically what's the main industries and what would tourists go for if they were to go to, uh, <laughs> well, to Denmark? Well, we have about five and a half million people. So yes. Maybe yes. a little more by now. Um, and we're made up of a lot of islands, very mm -hmm. beautiful yeah. flat country. So um, my contribution to anyone going to Denmark as a tourist would be uh, learn how to ride a bike before you go because that's a wonderful way to get around. I definitely think so. And then there are plenty of uh, possibilities to ride small ferries or even rent a kayak or a, a rowing boat. And it's, in particular during summer, it's very clean. So even in the harbor of Copenhagen, you are able to swim and dive. With and if you, don't, yeah. if you don't believe that, you can see a picture of that right here from Copenhagen Harbor, where people are jumping in That's and swimming. Right. Wow. <laughs> With regard to, to sort of Danish products, yes. uh, Lego is uh, the largest uh, a toy manufacturer of the world in fact and they started out in Denmark in fact the, the name Lego comes out of Danish lie God which is directly translate, translated means play well um, <laughs> among other industries are uh, Medicare where Novo Nordisk is an example of a really big uh, Danish company at the American market finally the Danish commercial fleet carries in fact 10% of world trade I think that's a surprising fact to most Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about uh, Washington DC. How big is your community here? Uh, well, we are, I think we're surprised every day to find out how many Danes actually live in Washington DC and most of them work in the international organizations such as IMF and the World Bank and so forth. Um, we don't have a very large community in Washington but big enough for them to come out on EU Open House and help us out. Mm -hmm. I should add that most of the Danish immigrants originally went to the Midwest, so That's we have true. huge Danish uh, communities up in Minnesota, Michigan, the Dakotas, down to uh, Nebraska. And what's a special reason for that? Why are they gravitate more to those areas? I think for us, this is the climate here is of course wonderful, but it's, it is very it's it's warm in comparison to Denmark, whereas the Midwest 
uh, would be uh, originally more closer to the climate in, in Denmark with uh, long cold winters and summers that are they are there but uh, I don't know in the middle it's very hot and then it's agricultural land and we are traditional agricultural land we still have a very sophisticated uh, food producing sector uh, at the United States market cheese is an example of, of uh, uh, one of the very good quality goods we sell here. Correct me, am I wrong? Denmark is not part of the EU, EU correct? Yes, we are. You are? Yeah, we I'm are surprised. Yeah. Yes. yes, we are a member Sorry. of the EU. Yes, it's because there are others that are not. So why did you become, why, what is the effectivity of, uh, the effectiveness of the EU? But that provides a huge internal market. Again, Denmark is not a very big country, so we rely on being able to sell and export our goods. And uh, and the EU is a free market area. We very much hope then that that uh, the, the, the ongoing negotiations with the United States and the EU will succeed, so we will have created the world's largest free trade area. Mm -hmm. In terms of global outreach, is uh, Denmark very much involved also in community work? In other words, when there are disasters in the other parts of the globe, do you also send out your volunteers yes, and relief Denmark, efforts? Denmark, with the earthquake in Nepal, yes. I believe we sent close to 10 million Danish kroners mm. uh, as part of the rescue effort that were distributed through Danish aid <laughs> organizations. We sent help, uh, helpers out, we sent uh, volunteers um, and aid workers and food. Yeah, and, and the fact is that Den Denmark is among the largest contributors with regard to mm -hmm. development aid uh, on a relative basis because, of, again, we are we are not the largest <laughs> nation of the world. Mm -hmm. Kroner is the currency, and what is the exchange to the dollar? Oh, is it 6.6 .6 now? Yes, it yes. is. <laughs> <laughs> so for those people who'd like to visit Denmark and uh, in terms of uh, visa regulations, the member EU countries, of course, go to your country for several months without a visa. They don't need a visa, you correct? You don't need a visa no, at all. But for the US Schengen, citizens, yes. then? You would need a visa to visit the EU, but it's, it's a formality. I see. So even if you are there for just a week, you would have to apply for a visa? Yes. yes. Uh, for all the citizens? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the special food of the country? Ooh. Give us that special uh, gourmet recipe. Well, we're <laughs> what are you known for? Known for chocolate? Known yes. All around the world for what's called the new Nordic cuisine, which talks a lot about uh, find, you know, eating the food that's where you live. Um, so in Denmark, we're very famous for uh, the food that actually grows in Denmark. Um, and uh, we eat a lot of pork, we eat a lot of fish, and a lot of root vegetables. Uh, quite healthy diet, I think. It, it is. Mm -hmm. Then, well, in fact, here today we are trying to introduce on the American market what is called the Danish Flødebolle. That is, well, what could you call it? Um, almost like it's sweet, it's yes. uh, a bit like marshmallow. Kind of a meringue, maybe? Yes. Oh, yes. Really? With a chocolate on the outside. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would recommend you to try down yes. in that corner. Give us a special restaurant here that features uh, food from Denmark. Not, Not in Washington yet, but several in New York and also around the country where the big Danish communities are. In Solvang, California. Oh, Solvang! Yes. Yeah. Of course, that's and, very well known. Yeah. Been there. And then you'll be able see. to get, I mean, half, the, half the, the shops there are bakeries, so bakeries, yes. mm -hmm. thing. and many, of course, I think no Danish pastry. Yes, oh yes, definitely. <laughs> now, finally, how many languages do you speak and can you speak each one of you a different language? Greetings to the world. What uh, languages? How many languages are there? Uh, I think I could claim two or three fluently and then understand a few more. <laughs> That's a simple yeah. Any message uh, to the people about your open house? You see, how different is this from the past year? Well, we always try to have a family day where families can come and relax and kids can play with Lego and parents can hang around and learn about our country. So, welcome here and Welcome to Denmark. Yeah. Yes. How do you say thank you? Tak. Tak is thank you. Okay. Yes. Tak. Thank you. So much. Tak. Tak. Thank you.